This is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Rodney Pierce and Yoshihiro Hattori? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background of this case, including the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Yoshihiro Hattori lived in Japan with his parents and siblings. He went by the name Yoshi. In August of 1992, at age 16, he traveled to Baton Rouge, Louisiana as part of a student exchange program. He stayed with Richard and Holly Haymaker, a married couple in Baton Rouge. They had a son named Webb. Yoshi and Webb were invited to a Halloween party taking place on October 17, 1992, in the town of Central, which is about a 25-minute drive from Baton Rouge. With Webb driving, the two teenagers headed out to the party. Yoshi dressed up as the character Tony Monero from the 1977 movie Saturday Night Fever. The character was famously played by John Travolta. Webb had been injured in a pool accident in the summer and was wearing a neck brace. He was also wearing bandages on his head in an effort to turn the neck brace into a costume. So he was improvising. At about 8 p.m., Yoshi and Webb arrived in the neighborhood where the party was taking place, but accidentally went to the wrong residence. They had selected the street address of 10311 East Brookside when the house they were looking for was actually 10131. The correct house was five doors away. The house they walked up to had Halloween decorations, which also contributed to them believing they were at the right place. The house was occupied by a 30-year-old supermarket butcher named Ronald Pierce, his wife Bonnie, and two children. The teenagers walked up to the front door of the house and rang the doorbell, but there was no answer. Bonnie then opened the side door and saw Webb standing just a few feet away. Initially, she thought that Webb needed help. He looked like he had just been in an automobile collision with the neck brace and the bandages on his head. Then she saw Yoshi running toward her. Webb tried to say something to Bonnie, but she slammed the door and ordered her husband to retrieve his firearm. At this point, Webb figured that they were probably at the wrong house. The teenagers started walking away as Rodney opened the side door. He was holding a 44 Magnum revolver with an 8-inch barrel and fitted with a scope. He normally used the weapon for hunting. Yoshi approached Rodney excitedly and exclaimed, We're here for the party. We're here for the party. Webb saw the gun and attempted to warn Yoshi, telling him, No, come back. Rodney pointed the gun at Yoshi and yelled the word, Freeze. Yoshi continued to approach Rodney. He was laughing, smiling, and waving his arms around. When Yoshi had closed the distance to about five feet, Rodney fired a single shot from his weapon, striking Yoshi in the chest. Rodney then closed the side door of the house. Bonnie called 911. Webb ran to a next-door neighbor to request assistance. The neighbor came back to the house with them and found Yoshi lying on his back, severely wounded from the gunshot. It took the police about 40 minutes to arrive at the scene. Between the time of the shooting and when the police arrived, Rodney and Bonnie did not leave the house. Bonnie actually yelled at a neighbor to go away when the neighbor called for help. Yoshi died in the ambulance a few minutes after first responders arrived. The police investigated the incident and decided not to charge Rodney Pierce with a crime. The police determined that Yoshi was trespassing and his rapid approach of Rodney put Rodney in fear for his life. After officials of the Japanese consulate and the governor of Louisiana expressed concern, Rodney was charged with manslaughter. Rodney was tried and found not guilty of the crime. Yoshi's family sued Rodney, and they were awarded $650,000. Rodney's insurance company paid $100,000. It's not clear if the family was able to collect anything else. Rodney lost his job and his house, and would eventually live in a trailer park. Now moving to my analysis. One of the more controversial aspects of this case would be the not guilty verdict for Rodney Pierce. Many people believe he was actually guilty. Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that he was guilty, starting with the inculpatory evidence. 
When Rodney first encountered the teenagers, they were 30 feet away from his house and walking away. In essence, they were retreating. It was Rodney's actions that led Yoshi to approach the house once again. When Yoshi closed the distance with Rodney, he was saying, we're here for the party. He was not making statements that were threatening. Rodney had a clear way to escape the confrontation. He could have simply closed the door on the side of his house. Rodney admitted to the police that he made a mistake. Rodney was six foot two and had a physically demanding job. It is reasonable to believe that he was in good shape as far as physical strength. Yoshi was shorter and weighed only 145 pounds. Rodney could have defended himself without using deadly force. Even though Yoshi did approach Rodney quickly, Yoshi's arms were out to the sides. He was waving them around. It was clear that he was not a threat. Now moving to the exculpatory factors. Rodney retrieved his weapon in response to his wife's reaction. She said that she was panicked and not thinking. In a sense, Rodney was just taking her word for it that there was some type of threat. He may have become panicked in response to her panic. Panic can be contagious. This would not be the first time something like this happened. Yoshi was carrying a camera, which Rodney could have mistaken for a weapon. Yoshi did not respond to the command freeze. He continued to close the distance. Yoshi had an unusual way of moving. This was an assertion of the defense, but other people agreed with this as well. He had this particular interpersonal style and mannerism where he would excitedly run up to people very fast while vigorously waving his arms. When he was doing this, he would smile and laugh. He was described as gregarious and hyperactive. Rodney may have misinterpreted this energetic, lively, and spontaneous style as aggression. Both Yoshi and Webb looked unusual. They were wearing costumes. The shooting took place two weeks before Halloween. Rodney may not have made the connection to the holiday that far in advance, even though his house was decorated. If this had occurred on Halloween night, Rodney would have been expecting people dressed in fanciful costumes to be running around. When considering all the evidence, do I think that Rodney was guilty? I think that he was probably guilty, but I'm not surprised by the verdict. Yoshi was a stranger in a strange land. The jury identified with Rodney. They could appreciate how he may have interpreted Yoshi as frightening. The jury put a lot of weight on the fact that Yoshi was within five feet of Rodney and was still moving toward him. The fatality in this case resulted from an unfortunate collection of circumstances and exceptionally poor judgment on the part of Rodney. Both Yoshi and Rodney failed to assess the situation accurately. Yoshi was looking forward to a Halloween party. He was unfamiliar with the tradition. It's reasonable to believe that he thought that Rodney pointing a gun at him was just part of the holiday. Rodney was just fooling around. Yoshi knew that he himself was not a threat. It never occurred to him that somebody else could interpret his behavior as threatening. Yoshi did not understand English well. He didn't understand what Rodney was saying. So when Rodney was saying freeze, that didn't really connect with Yoshi. He didn't understand the command. As far as Rodney's behavior, he made a series of mistakes. I can understand him initially retrieving his weapon based on Bonnie being panicked. There's nothing wrong with simply being prepared. The problem started after this. There are a few things he should have done that he failed to do. He should have asked Bonnie to explain why she was alarmed. He should have assessed the situation from inside his house only and called the police if he believed there was a danger. At no point should Rodney have opened that side door. That was the key mistake. It really doesn't make sense that he opened it considering he looked out and didn't see anyone there. He put himself in a situation where he could feel threatened. When Yoshi approached, it was alarming to Rodney. When Yoshi would not stop approaching even after being told to, Rodney became even more frightened and shot him. The chain of events was started by that initial catastrophic decision to open the side door. Rodney was the one who created contact between himself and Yoshi. Yoshi was not trying to break into the house. He was outside of the house. Rodney had no justifiable reason to engage Yoshi outside. This case led to a lot of political discussions about firearms. One individual connected to the case said that Rodney must have been possessed by the power of the gun. 
implying that Rodney was unable to think clearly because the gun was somehow controlling his mind. Like, rather than the gun being an inanimate object, the revolver was somehow a supernatural being that had mind control capabilities. Maybe it was like a possession that was happening because of Halloween. Maybe all the good targets of possession were already taken, so there is some ghost standing there like, all right, I'll take the gun. I suppose it is important before firing a gun to make sure it's not inhabited by supernatural beings. I don't think the reason for Yoshi's death had anything to do with politics. Rodney Pierce legally owned his weapon. He had no criminal history. Waiting periods and background checks had no bearing on this case. This case comes down to a matter of judgment. The concept of judgment is behind every bad shooting, whether the shooting results in criminal charges or not. In confrontations, people feel rushed to make a decision. They become more concerned about the price of not using force as opposed to the consequences of using force. The fear and panic restrict their ability to make good decisions. Their emotions take over. When Rodney fired the weapon, he was probably genuinely afraid, but he put himself in that situation through exercising poor judgment when he was still safely inside his house. What lessons can we learn in this case? Looking at this from the point of view of Rodney, I would say the lessons would be approaching a situation aggressively does not promote defense, and it's important to make sure that a threat actually exists before using deadly force. From the point of view of Yoshi, I don't really think that Yoshi did anything wrong in this case, but the question becomes, could he have done anything to avoid being killed? It's probably not much of a consolation that he didn't break the law. Surviving would have been the objective. The only thing I can think of is that Yoshi did not understand how his mannerisms could be interpreted. He thought that running up to people quickly while laughing, smiling, and waving his arms would be interpreted as him being friendly. He thought the best of people. People who knew him would say that he lacked a sixth sense. He was never on guard. He trusted people. So it would appear that Rodney needed to be a little more trusting, and maybe Yoshi would have benefited from a little less trust. Sometimes less trust is safer, especially when encountering people with terrible judgment. I think it's a sad testament to how much poor judgment is in the world that somebody would need to think this way in order to maximize their chances of survival. Those are my thoughts on the case of Ronald Pierce and Yoshihiro Hattori. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.